Well, hi, everyone. This is Don Smith, and I welcome you to my February tip of the month. And this month, I would like to talk to you about combining images both in Lightroom and in Photoshop. So you can see I have two rows of images here. This has been kind of a busy month for me. I started out the first two weeks in February with uh, my partner, Gary Hart, taking a group of 11 Hardy photographers over to Iceland to photograph, and we had a fantastic time. And in fact, we got to go into an ice cave on the southern edge of Iceland, and that's the first um, part of this that I want to show you. And let's just kind of walk through this, and you, it'll make sense. So the, here's uh, an opening in the ice cave, uh, and this cave actually went in a couple of different directions. So I walked towards the back end of the cave, um, there was a group up in here, but they had left, and then I had this area to myself. And so I could get this all in one exposure. Uh, I was using my Sony A1, and I believe here I was using my 24 to 105 to frame this up. And um, you can see if I expose for the opening of the cave here, which I did in this frame, and you can look at my histogram, it's done a really good job. Um, then I would have to bracket because everything here up in the eyes got too dark. So I was just bracketing, bracketing here, excuse me, by probably two thirds or one stop. Um, and I would just click and I actually got enough on the third frame to clear the shadows and get enough, but I always kind of buffer it and I give myself one more. Okay. And now you can see, obviously the highlights are, uh, blown out. I've actually gone through here and I've opened up. Let's start over again. Uh, you can see where I've op played with the exposure a little bit on each frame. Here I opened up the shadows and the next frame I opened up the shadows a little bit more and then finally even a little bit more. So the way I think about combining these images is I would highlight all of them, but I would not come down here. Typically, I would come down here and click Sync Settings. But because I went in and individually uh, uh, changed the exposure on all of these, I don't want to sync the settings. Um, I just want to combine them as I worked on each individual frame. So I would come up under Photo at this point, go to Photo Merge, and come here to HDR, and when it opens, you're going to see it's already process out, processed out the HDR from my uh, practice attempt. But that's roughly the frame that I came up with. Uh, that I then came down to click on Merge and then opened it in Lightroom, and I actually went through, uh, let me cancel out of this, and I processed this image um, strictly in... Uh, Luminar Neo. This is the new Luminar Neo, and uh, if you're interested in purchasing this, I did find out that the core development team, sadly, is based in Kiev, um, Ukraine. Uh, but let's show some some support. This is a great piece of software. You'll really love it. Use my code here; you'll even get 10% off. And let's let's please uh, support Luminar at this time of their need. All right, okay. let's go back now uh, and ramp up the difficulty level just a bit. On my return home this earlier this week, I took a drive up the Big Sur coast from where I live in Morro Bay and photographed sunset at an area called, just south of an area called Ragged Point, if you're familiar with the area. So let me start on, the, you can see I combined three frames here. But uh, because we were right at sunset time, the light was nice and soft. Now, I want to point out a few things uh, of the way I thought about going about capturing this picture. I needed to make sure that I was very sharp from foreground to background. And you see that this image is grainy. And the reason it is, is because it was a windy evening out there and to I had to go all the way up to 1 30th of a second to freeze any of this wild California lilac that was in the foreground. 
So I, to compensate, I had to raise my ISO up to 6,400. So I started out, my thought process was, and really having looked at this, I could have got away with one click here, but I focused right in here on the first frame. Then I shifted the focus, so I was on this second row of the second frame. And then my third frame, I didn't like that the water was looking kind of frozen. I wanted to get some motion into it. So what I did is I lowered my ISO back down to 100 because I knew I safely had a couple of frames captured up here to freeze down the foliage. And by shooting at ISO 100, that gave me, and again, I, I left my aperture alone. When you're combining any of these pictures, um, it's important to uh, shoot with the same aperture so everything lines up together in processing. Well, that gave me a two-second exposure at ISO 100, and now you see I kind of getting a little bit of smoothness in the water back in here. So how do we go about uh, getting these images to combine? So I'm going to highlight all of these three images. This time I'm going to have to do this in Photoshop. So the way we do it, instead of coming in, right-clicking on Edit In and opening up into Photoshop 2022, we're going to come all the way down here to the bottom and say open as layers in Photoshop. Now, my computer is getting a little bit old here, so I'm going to rejoin you once all these layers have been opened up in Photoshop. Okay, so we're back into Photoshop. One thing I want to remind you uh, that I didn't show you on the previous images of the ice cave, I said I didn't sync any settings in uh, Lightroom. Here, I did sync the settings. I, I think I did a little bit of tweak to the exposure um, on one of the three frames. I just picked one. And then um, I made sure I set you know my, um, my lens correction. Uh, and I didn't do a whole lot. Then I highlighted the three frames and I went over and I synced it. So my apologies for not showing you that. Um, I think most of you know how to do that. It's very simple. When you highlight the three frames, the sync button in Lightroom on the bottom right will light, will light up and then you can go ahead and sync the exposure for all three frames. Okay, so how do we go about combining these? Well, let's let's turn all of these layers off, first of all. And I'm going to show you the first layer here. Okay, this is clearly the, uh, the layer for the um, smooth water that I shot at two seconds. And it really doesn't matter at this point right now if all of these are in order. Now, it's always going to be the, the top layer that I turn on that's going to show. So when I turn on the second one, that's showing you where I focused right in here. And the third one is going to show you where I focused on the front row. So here's the key. What we're going to do is we're going to shift click and we're going to highlight all three of these. You can see that I utilize the TK8 panel and I absolutely love this panel. If you've been with me for my videos, I'm, I'm usually talking about this panel all the time. If you don't have this panel, I'm going to kind of try to show you a workaround in Photoshop with all three uh, highlighted, all three layers, I would have to come down here and I would have to go to auto align layers and auto blend layers. Here's the reason I love the TK8. Tony has already put a line and focus in as uh, under the blend. So let me, let me click back because I did that kind of quickly. Right here on the TK8 combo uh, panel, you see a little TK with a play button. These are all actions. Actions up here, actions involving color, and actions involving blend. So what I want to do is I want to align and focus these layers. So I'm going to click. And this is going to take a little time to go through. So I will join you once Tony's action has done its thing. OK, now um, the action Align and Focus has run, and um, here is the merged layer sitting on top. If I turn that off, 
it's going to be the next layer, which again was the front. If I turn that off, the next layer would be here. And if I turn that off, here's my two second exposure for the water. So let's turn these all back on. We know this bottom layer is the layer that I'm gonna to have to blend with this layer uh, to get the movement of the water because I don't want this. It, this could make a pretty picture, no doubt. But to me, uh, the whole goal was to kind of smooth these out. So what I'm going to have to do, and I can turn all of these back on, knowing that this bottom layer is the layer with this, the long exposure to smooth out the water, I'm going to simply click and push up and push it under uh, this layer right here that is the merged layer. So again, if I was to turn all of these off, you're saying you're seeing that this is the, uh, oops, excuse me, I gotta turn that one off for you too. Now you can see all of this is out of focus in the front, but because the wind was blowing in and then at two seconds, it wouldn't hold. So hopefully that is making sense to you. I can turn these all on. I wanna highlight the top merged layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here in the tool palette to the object selection tool. And when I click on that, um, I, I want you to bring your eyes up here to the top. I get two choices. I can start with a rectangle or I can start with a lasso. And I think for this uh, particular one, I am going to start with the lasso tool. I'm not sure if it's selected it, so let's make sure it's selected. And I'm just gonna draw kind of slowly as best I can, and I'm not the best at selecting these out like this, but I just want to roughly, whoops, <laughs> we'll come back up and around, roughly draw an outline around where we want Photoshop to think about selecting these edges. So as you can see, this can be far from perfect because I'm going to show you how we can refine this and then just bring it all the way around until you loop into that and I'm going to click on this again the object selection tool and this time when I do you can see I have um, over here on the far right something that says select and mask okay so I'm going to go ahead and click that and now you're going to see it's opened me up into the Select and Mask dialog box. And this is where we're going to come in and we're going to refine this edge. Uh, let me start over here. Uh, I have this turned on so we can see a mask, so I can. It, it'll help my eyes differentiate, excuse me, between the edge here of the foliage. And um, we're going to fine tune that edge. You can actually click on the color here and do any color you want. I just happened to click something real vibrant so my eyes can see it. Down here, the refine mode, I want it to be object aware because uh, we are trying to separate the ocean off of the foliage. And on my feathering, I'm just going to put in uh, 0.5. And that's all I'm going to do on the feather. Uh, contrast, I'm going to leave alone. And shift edge, I'm going to leave alone. Now, let's go up to the left-hand side. It's this second brush down that hopefully is going to do the magic for us, and that's the Refine Edge brush. So as I bring this in, and that was, I'm glad that happened. Let me take this back. If you ever get into a position where you have a crosshair like this, and you're wondering where your brush went, it's because you've accidentally, which I did, hit the caps lock key on your keyboard. So when you turn off the cap locks key, that will turn this into a brush. And what I'm gonna do is start to brush along this line. And I'm gonna do this in sections just to let you see it because this could actually take a while. Okay, and now you're seeing it's starting to refine that edge. And you can take this brush up and down and we're going to get into this portion of it, and let's see if it figures that out. No. So what I'm going to do, you can see this branch coming over is not fully protected. So I'm going to lower the brush and hold my Alter Option key 
and I'm going to paint the mask off of that. And let's see if it'll do that now. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to release the Alter Option key. And we're going to do this a little bit at a time. There we go. So some of this you'd have to have a lot of uh, patience with. And remember, this is doing a great job now. Remember, this we're just trying to blend the ocean. So it doesn't have to be super perfect on this edge. Uh, but nonetheless, we want to we want to get it as, as good as we can. I'm going to raise up the brush now because we're through that difficult section. Okay. And we'll, we'll work over into this section now. It's doing a fantastic job. I may raise the brush up even a little more. I might be biting off more than I should chew here. Let's see if I did. Nope, it did a really nice job. Let's shrink it way down, go inside that little opening, and see if it will fill that in. Yep. Okay, so don't be afraid to raise your refined ed edge brush up and down as needed. And I'm going to come around and we'll, we'll get that little section. We'll go out to there. And uh, the other thing I would advise you is don't try to do this all at once. Um, it, it's going to, it's really dependent picture to picture. And let's just finish that off and then see where we're at with all of this. I've got a little bit of water down in here. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to we're going to enlarge this up a little. So Command Plus on your keyboard, and we can kind of uh, I want to click the hand tool now. Whoops, I accidentally swiped over that. And let's hit Command Z. Okay. Now let me come back to the refined brush. And um, we're just going to try to get inside of here a little bit. And again, this is going to be so small, I don't think I, we have to really uh, stress over this too much. But, you know, if you're meticulous on the front end, the better job you do, the better job of blending it's going to do. Okay. And I think we can clean that edge up a little bit more. And right there. And I'm still seeing something back over in here that's bothering me. Okay, let's click over to the hand tool now so we can kind of pull along here. And right there, let's let's see if we can hit that. Th this I knew would be difficult. This little area right in here. All right, I'm not going to worry about, I, I could hit the option key and let's shrink this down a little bit and just see if we can pull that little, one little piece of foliage back. Yeah, it's really, it's really having a hard time. So then I come out along the edge of it. And again, I don't think this is going to be neither here nor there if we get that little piece. Okay. Um few more over in here. So you just have to have some patience with this tool. This is a really difficult one. Um, all right, I think I've done a pretty good job here. So I'm going to center that down. Now we're going to output it. So we have to come down to our output settings here. All right, and then right here, it says output to a selection, but I'm going to output it to a layer mask. And we're going to allow, now I'm going to click OK. And voila, through the magic of uh, Photoshop and selections, I can turn that off. There's the entire frame at two seconds. And there's masks, so I'm allowing the frames underneath to uh, go ahead and um, you know, these were the frames that we shot, or excuse me, I shot at 1 30th of a second, but that higher ISO. So I would want to run this through Topaz Denoise to deal with the noise. And then I would, um, I would there's some dust bunnies in here we can take care of. I've got a tilting horizon. 
Um, what the way I deal with that is I just go in Photoshop. That's why I like doing this in Photoshop. And I'm just going to eyeball that. Make sure content aware up here is checked and then click. And let's see what a good job Photoshop will do for us here. And yeah, it's leveled out that horizon. And let's just uh, allow it to fill itself in. I'm going to also go to the clone stamp tool. So make a stamp layer. If you're with Tony's um, uh, panel, you just simply click there. Or you would have to click the keys Shift, Option, or Alt, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. So Shift, Option, or Alt, Command, and E. And that will make that layer. And now I should be able to clone it right away. And I did. So from here, I would simply go on. Now I would come over here and I would flatten this layer. And then I would go ahead and I would process out this image, which I've done. Let's go back into Lightroom. And... There is the final image once I worked on it and um, processed it out in Photoshop. So that's it. That's a couple of different ways that you guys can think about masking. This is a difficult one, no, no doubt. So, and I know a lot of you had written to me asking if I could show it. So I hope now you understand the steps um, on how we went about and did this. And uh, just another little you know, tidbit, you can kind of stick in your arsenal for the next time you're out. Uh, we're, we're only limited really these days by our imagination. And if you know the steps on how to put this all together in the computer, it's just really freeing. And it allows you to create images, something like this, where we have frozen foliage when the wind's blowing, but moving water. Um, now you know how to do it. Okay, so uh, keep the uh, thoughts coming in on videos you would like to see, um, because this one did come from a number of emails that I received, and I'm glad uh, you're sending them to me. It gives me ideas on what I can present to you. So until next time, get out there and keep shooting, stay safe, work on those processing skills, and we will talk to you later.